First book of Kings, chapter 11, verses 4 to 13. And by the time he was old, they had led him into worship of foreign gods. He was not faithful to the Lord his God as his father David had been. He worshipped Eserat, the goddess of Sidon, and Molech, the disgusting god of Ammon. He sinned against the Lord and was not true to him as his father David had been. On the mountain east of Jerusalem, he built a place to worship Chemosh, the disgusting god of Moab, and a place to worship Molech, the disgusting god of Ammon. He also built places of worship where all his foreign wives could burn incense and offer sacrifices to their own gods. Even though the Lord, the God of Israel, had appeared to Solomon twice and had commanded him not to worship foreign gods, Solomon did not obey the Lord but turned away from him. So the Lord was angry with Solomon and said to him, because you have deliberately broken your covenant with me and disobeyed my commands, I promise that I will take the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your officials. However, for the sake of your father David, I will not do this in your lifetime, but during the reign of your son, and I will not take the whole kingdom away from him. Instead, I will leave him one tribe for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city I have made my own. The Word of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, when it comes to religion, for Christians, prayer becomes an important aspect. As the Lord himself, when he, whenever he wanted to uh, know, seek the will of the Father, he went to a lonely place, to a higher place, and then prayed to the Lord. And we need to constantly pray to the Lord. Sometimes we might feel that the Lord is not answering, but we need to have that uh, persistence in praying so that we will have results one day. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Then Jesus left and went away to the territory near the city of Tyre. He went into a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, but he could not stay hidden. A woman whose daughter had an evil spirit in her heard about Jesus and came to him at once and fell at his feet. The woman was a Gentile, born in the region of Phoenicia in Syria. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus answered, let us first feed the children. It is sent right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Sir, she answered, even the dogs under the table eat the children's leftovers. So Jesus said to her, because of the, uh, that answer, go back home where you will find that the demon has gone out of your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed. The demon had indeed gone out of her. The Saving Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's gospel passage, we see that our Lord rewarding the persistence of that mother 
whose child was possessed by a demon. And she was in a helpless situation. A daughter also would have been in that same state, my brothers and sisters. What a mother will request from anyone, friends, when the child is in a desperate state. A mother will always pray and ask someone to cure the child. Because that's a mother. Mothers will always feel for their children, no doubt about that. So let us pray for all the mothers, first and foremost, who are struggling, suffering in the world today, in our families today, because they need our prayers, because they, sometimes, most of the time the mothers become really, really helpless. And they sometimes des become desperate because, uh, because, because they love their children, my brothers and sisters. Now in this story, this mother pleaded before the Lord, asking the Lord to help uh, the child. But apparently this lady was an outsider and from Syria. The Lord initially wanted to test her faith and said, no, first and foremost, I need to treat my people, the Jewish people. Then she uh, begins the argument. And having seen the persistence and the faith of this mother, now the Lord himself says, well, you go and see, your child is cured, my brothers and sisters. Then as she went, the child was cured and she sees the child lying on the bed. Now, persistence in prayer is very important, friends. Now, I remember one day a gentleman came to me and told me, Father, I've been praying for one intention, but nothing is happening. But I will never ever give up. I will pray constantly for that intention, asking the good Lord to bless this intention and give me consolation and peace. I meet this gentleman again after a week and he says the same thing. And I was really kind of no, delighted to see the faith of that gentleman who says, I will continue to pray, continue to pray. I will never ever give up. Now that should be our attitude, my brothers and sisters, that sometimes we might feel that our prayers are not answered. The Lord is not on our side and so on. But the Lord has time for you and me, friends. Now the Lord will, will not immediately answer your, uh, your prayers and all that. But the Lord knows what is best for you and me. Therefore, the Lord will have the time and will accordingly will help all of us. My brothers and sisters, what is important is to be persistent in our prayer, in our struggles too. Like that mother who really wanted her uh, daughter to be cured and that the Lord's uh, intervention was very, very important. The Lord will intervene when we also have our difficulties and the uh, Lord will bring us consolation and peace like the mother who received that consolation and peace from the Lord himself. And the Lord will journey with us. What we want is to have faith and confidence in the Lord like this mother who had tremendous amount of faith and confidence in the Lord. Let us pray that God may strengthen our faith and also help us with the power of the Holy Spirit to be persistent in our prayer and our struggle as well. Amen. Sri